Hi everybody, we're here for day two of Z-scores. And so a couple things you want to have handy. You probably want to have your calculator handy. You probably want to have your Z-table handy because we're going to be looking at a couple things off of here to find Z-scores while we go through this. Now the big new thing that I want to do today, because we've already talked about how to find Z-scores, how to read that table, what they mean a little bit, but we haven't looked at asymmetric intervals. So in other words, what we're going to do is we're going to try to find how what percent of data is in a certain interval if we go this amount from the mean the one direction and then a different amount from the mean the other direction, how do we figure that out? And so we're going to have a z-score that goes along with each of those, so we're going to have to do like an intermediate step and then figure out in the end what percent of data falls in that interval. So I have an example for us to use today. And so we're talking about samples of a pollutant that are taken from the Cuyahoga River. And so the Cuyahoga River, if you don't know the history, was very polluted in the past, so polluted that it caught on fire. The entire river caught on fire. Um, and so now I think people get a little annoyed with it because, you know, you pollute a river so much that it catches on fire once and you never live it down. Uh, so we're going to look at if there's a certain pollutant in the Cuyahoga River that has a mean of 30 parts per million. And that's a really common measurement is like per million pieces, how many of this thing is in there. And so Normally when they measure this, they get 30 parts per million. Uh, and then the standard deviation of this is 4 parts per million. And so I drew out a visual here. It's not completely necessary, but sometimes I think it helps just to see this normal curve with where everything would fall. And so if I put this information on here going by standard deviation, we have 30 right here in the middle. I'm just going up by 4 each time. Gives us those if we go at 3 standard deviations. Going down 3 standard deviations gives us those points. So let's see if we can find some percentages. I threw in this first one as a little review here. So what percent of samples are between 26 and 34? Now do you notice 26 and 34 is actually just going down one standard deviation and up one standard deviation? Kind of our like little rule of the one standard deviation, two standard deviations, three standard deviations. Remember we went 68.3, 95.5, 99.7 and so this is just 68.3%. And that's it, no computation necessary, really. Now, could you do some stuff on the z-table and find that still? Yes, but we don't really need to. Now, what percent is under 36? All right, here's where we're going to have to go to our z-table and do a little work. So 36 doesn't come out to like one of these nice whole standard deviations. It's right between these. Um, and so to figure out the z-score, remember, and if you're watching this later, you're confused about how I'm getting these numbers, go and watch the z-scores video that's part one and that's going to help with that. So remember the way we find the z-score is we take our entry minus the mean and divide it by the standard deviation. Basically we want to know how many standard deviations are we away from the mean. And so if we go six units away from the mean because that was 30, we're at 36, and our standard deviation is four, then we're going six away from there, standard deviations is four, and so we're going one and a half above the mean. And remember, if we go above the mean, it's a positive z-score. If we go below the mean, that's a negative z-score. So since we went above the mean, one and a half standard deviations, the z-score here is 1.5. So looking at our z-table, at 1.5, the percentage that goes along with that is 93.32. And I know on your table it says 0 0.9332. But just making that decimal into a percentage, you just move the decimal point two places. So 93.32% of the samples should be under 36. All right, what percent is under 21? Well, this is the same idea that we just did, except now, do you notice, we're under the mean. And so our z-score has to come out negative on this one. And so we went 9 down from the mean. And so really, since we're going below the mean, remember we always do our entry minus the mean. So if I do 21 minus 30, I get negative 9. Divided by the standard deviation to see how many standard deviations we went away from the mean comes out to negative 2.25. So that, in this case, is our z-score. So we want to know how, what percent of the data should fall below 2 and a quarter z-scores below the mean. And so... Looking on our z table here, if I go negative 2.25, so negative 2.2, and then I got to go over to 5, I come up with 
0.122 or 0.0122 or changing it to a percentage 1.22 percent all right and so now this is the new part for today i put these two in here which we've actually already done to lead us to the answer to this question what percent is between 21 and 36 so i'm going to go over here to our visual and help just to help a little bit with this hopefully so here we've got 36 all right so right there is 36 and what we're saying is from there down all the way forever there's 93.32 percent of data and then right around here we've got 21 and what we're saying is from there down forever there's 1.22 percent of the data if I want just what falls in this range, then basically if 93.32 is everything from here down forever and 1.22 is from here down forever, then I really just want to take off this 1.22% that's on the end of this, it's on the tail of this, to get what's in this interval. And so it's really just a subtraction of these two. So I'm going to do 93.32 minus the 1.22. And that'll give us the percentage that falls between those two numbers. And so we should expect 92.1% of our samples to fall between 21 and 36. All right, so that's how we find an asymmetric interval using z-scores. Now, a little bit of, I guess, interpretation of this, because this is how this is used a lot in industry and in science in those fields. Um, should a sample of 40 parts per million, PPM is just parts per million, should a sample of 40 parts per million be a cause for alarm in this river? All right, well, here's what we have to think. What's the probability? What are the chances that this sample comes along? So this is a normal distribution, so 40 parts per million is up here, so it's getting pretty far up there. So how rare is it, basically, is the question. And so we need to figure out the z-score for this. So 40 parts per million is 30 is our mean, 40 is 10 above that, so we're going 10 above that. But we need to figure out how many standard deviations that is to get the z-score. So 10 divided by 4 gives us a z-score of 2.5. So that's our z-score here. Now if z is 2.5, Looking at our Z table here, if Z is 2.5, we're at 99.38% of the data below there. Now, let's think about this for a second. When we get a sample, there's a 99.38% that it's lower than 40. So, is a sample of 40 parts per million high enough to be rare? Yes, it is. There's a less than 1% chance that it's 40 or higher. Does that make sense how I got that? Just 100 minus this number. And so there's really only like a 0.6 approximately chance that you have 40 parts per million or higher. And so should this be a cause for alarm? Probably. Um, because there's a less than 1% chance that the sample should be that high using that mean and that standard deviation. And so a lot of times this is called a p-value. In statistics and we're not going to get real far into this there's a whole thing called hypothesis testing and rejecting the null hypothesis and all that stuff but basically this would be significant at a p equals 0.01 level which it means it's significant um, and so there's a less than one percent chance that this happens so yes in the end this probably should be a cause for alarm in this situation uh, so there's how we find the z-scores of asymmetric a little bit of review of how we find z-scores in general, um, and then a little application for what this means when we're finding these z-scores as well.